Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube, and today we are gonna talk about incremental refresh inside of Power BI. You guys ready? Let's do it. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos. Like I said, we are at Microsoft Build Conference and I ran into Christian Wade, you guys may know him. He is the clicky, clicky, draggy, droppy master. And he said, he was, he was kind enough to say that he was gonna teach us the clicks for incremental refresh. So we're all gonna learn the clicks for this. So Christian, how are you doing? I am so well, Adam. Excellent. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad we, we are, could find the time yeah, to do absolutely. this. This is great, people yeah. are gonna love this. So. Incremental refresh. Yeah. Where do we start? I mean, where do we start? It's a huge feature. It is. It's, you know, wait, wait. It's huge because you can get to huge models, exactly. right? Exactly. Yes. It's huge in so many yes. ways, right? Yes. In so many dimensions. So, you know, incremental refresh is something traditionally reserved for analysis services for high end, scalable, uh, large models in analysis services. And we're bringing it into Power BI Premium. And in the back end, we actually use the same technology, but we've condensed all of the complexity yes. of how you set up yes. incremental refresh. You no longer need to write 2,000 lines of code. <laughs> it's a simple dialogue with a handful of drop downs. That's how we roll. That's how we roll. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> love it. All right. Do you want to show us how I this would works? I'd love to show you. All right, let's get into it. Absolutely. Let's get into it. The, the deal with incremental refresh, I mean, it's pretty simple, right? We have a large data set, potentially beyond a gigabyte, potentially even beyond the 10 gigabyte limit that we have in Power BI Premium today because we intend to lift that and we intend to have Power BI Premium limited only by the premium capacity size. Excellent. Which will then bring it in line with Azure Analysis Services level yeah. scalability. Yeah. And the largest capacity is 400 gigabytes. So, you know, you're talking about- On the about Azure Analysis Services. On the Azure Analysis yes. Services and we will get comparative <clears throat> Uh, sizing in Power BI Premium once we That's lift cool. that limit. Now, even over a gigabyte, it's very difficult to perform a refresh today when you have to refresh all of the data right. every time you do a refresh, right? right. Yeah, because we, it's all or nothing, right? It's we just, we gotta re, if it's 10 gig model, we gotta refresh all of that. Right, which can take a while it's and it's just while. inefficient. It's like a every time you refresh a data warehouse, you run an ETL job in a data warehouse, you don't reload all the data, right? right? Doesn't makes no, no sense no. whatsoever. We, we're not lazy, No, we're just course. efficient. We're efficient. we're efficient, that's exactly right? how we yes. roll. We're efficient, so if you have maybe a five year data set and you only need to refresh the, the last 10 days because that's all the data that can change. That's it. That's Why it. refresh all five years? I just want I just want the 10 exactly. days or the I one day. The I just, days. Why yes. do I need to refresh all five years? It makes no sense. Makes yeah. 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 So much, much better, much more Got efficient it. and more reliable, doesn't require long running connections to volatile yeah, data sources. Because they could time out on exactly us. Exactly. Right? We don't want a timeout. You know, especially, you know, over HTTP, <clears throat> you could have token refresh issues yes. and all sorts of things. Yep. Right? So it's, it's more reliable, it's more efficient, and it uses up less resources. Love it. Yes. Love it. So I have an example here. This is a subset of the full New York Taxi data set, which in its entirety is about 2 billion rows. And here you can see that the first time that the refresh was performed on this data set, it took about an hour and 10 minutes because it loaded all the history. It didn't have any of the history. So right. the first time you perform the refresh, it needs to load all the history. Makes right. sense, yep. right? Yep. A subsequent refresh then took 15 minutes. Instead of loading years of data, it loaded, say, five days of data, which is it's way better. Th that would cover us for any data changes. Right? Yeah. Anything yeah. older than five days is set in stone, so we don't need to refresh it. So yep. as you can see, uh, we're getting much faster refreshes, uh, 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 as in this example here. That's after you publish it to the service, right? Before you publish it to the service, we got to do some stuff. You need to do some stuff, yeah. right? You need to define that incremental refresh policy. Right. Where do we do that? We do that in desktop. So when can you get it, Adam? You can get it today. It was in the May release of Power BI That's Desktop. Right. Right. That's right. Yeah. So you know we're very excited about this. This is a combination of a lot of work. You've been losing you know, sleep over. I think you lost a little I know, more. I've lost Did a you lot of more? hair and you're getting, getting all close to me. Pieces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, for anyone who has ever set up incremental refresh in analysis services and written 2,000 lines of code, this one is for you, right? This yes. is going to make your life so much yes. more easy. It's pretty insane. All right. Okay, I'm here in Power BI Desktop. And uh, the first thing we want to do, if I have a large data set, like five years of data, 
I'm not going to fit it all into desktop anyway, right. right? Not many of us have between 50 and 100 gigabytes of memory on our laptop. Right? Got 64 gig. <laughs> I know. You're Close. an exception. I'm an exception. But respect. So, but, but it's not know. practical to do that. No, it's all. not practical. It's not practical. Absolutely. It's and even practical. if you could load it, it's probably going to be really sluggish. Exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. not going to be good. So we need to filter the data as it comes <clears> into Power Bear Desktop, as we had to before incremental refresh. And we would use uh, Power Query to do that. Now, the difference here is that we're going to filter the data using some predefined parameter names that are going to that are going to be picked up by the incremental refresh process downstream. Yep. Okay? So, I'm going to come into manage parameters and we have the range start and range end parameters. These are the predefined Excellent. parameter names. So far, I'm showing you nothing new in yeah. desktop. This is We've been able to create parameters there. for a long time. Exactly, yep. exactly. Awesome. And then we use those parameters to perform the filtering. So I'm going to select date time filters between. This is where we learn the clicks. <laughs> and here we say parameter range start. And here I need to select before. And then I say parameter range end. And that's it. This will filter the data coming into desktop because I only need, for example, one day yep. of data here in desktop. Yep. It's only once it's uh, published to the service that I want to load all of the history. Yep. Right? So having done that, and I can then define the incremental refresh policy. Right? So the policy is for a particular table. So you access the context menu for the table, say incremental refresh. If you don't see incremental refresh, right now it's a preview feature, so make sure you enable the preview yes, feature first. thank you very much. Yeah. Otherwise you won't see it and yes. you'll be like, I don't have it. Exactly. Okay, so there are a couple of points here on this dialogue that are worth pointing out. First off, this is only supported in premium, hence the diamond and the, the message, as the message says, if I perform a refresh here in desktop, it's gonna make no difference. Right. If I've only got one day of data filtered yeah. by those parameters, it's still gonna have one so day of data. The filter's still in effect it's, in the, the desktop. The filter is still right. in effect in the desktop. This only takes effect once it's published to the service, yep. right? And then uh, the first time it will load all the history, then it will do incremental refreshes. The other thing it points out here is that uh, currently we cannot uh, round trip this data set back to desktop. So we cannot download the PBIX from the service. Got we it. may introduce that at a later date, but it wouldn't be very useful yeah. anyway, unless you have a, a, really a, big... a, a laptop like yours. Once we remove that 10 gigabyte limit, some of these models will be easily yeah. 50 gigabytes. Yeah. So you wouldn't want to be opening that in right. uh, uh, on your, your desktop PC anyway. That's a bad day right there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So let's say we want uh, five years of data in total. Okay. All right. And um, so if so, we're saying five years total in data. So if we go into the sixth year, that other year falls off? Yes. Okay. So the first time you refresh it in the sixth year, like on January 1st, the, the oldest year will Got drop it. off. Right, Got so it will maintain a rolling window yep. uh, for you, and it will uh, manage all of that for you. This is the type of logic that people use to code yes. themselves yep. for um, Azure Analysis Services. Awesome. So the first time we refresh, it will load all five years, and subsequently, it will only load one day. Right. So if I'm performing a refresh daily, it will just load the new day, and I'm saying, in this particular case, I'm saying the data doesn't change historically, right. so I don't need to refresh any of the historical right. data. Right. Now, um, if the data can change, so let's say I need to cover the last 10 days in case of any data changes. Anything older than 10 days is set in stone. Right. But I want to at least refresh the last 10 days. Then I say, okay, let's make this 10 days. Got okay. it. Uh, does that make sense? That makes, that makes sense to me. If okay. it doesn't make sense to you, leave okay. a comment down below and we'll try and clarify it. Got it. it. Great. Okay, and then we have a couple of other advanced features. You know, this may be all you would need. In most cases, this is all you would need to, mm -hmm. to specify. But then we can also detect data changes. So we've gone from refreshing the whole five years for every refresh to just refreshing the last 10 days, which is obviously much more efficient. Yep. But what if I don't even need to refresh the last 10 days? Maybe the data hasn't even changed in the last 10 days, but I would like to just check whether it has or not. Okay. Right? And I can do that uh, if I have an auditing column, like last updated date, and it will use that and it will store the output of that column to detect whether data has changed in that incremental range. Nice. Makes sense? That's great. 
Okay, and that's an advanced feature, but you can get ultra efficient. Yep. So we've gone from somewhat. I like I like ultra. Efficient. Yeah, so we've gone that's from somewhat than... efficient to super efficient. Yes. We're, where now we're only refreshing ten days, but then we can get awesome. to ultra efficient, where yes. we only need to refresh potentially zero days or two days. Take, and taking it, it to the it next out. level. The next level of there efficiency. We go. That's how we. That's how we roll. All right. Okay, and then lastly, only bring in complete periods. Like financial systems might publish a month at a time. Yep. Uh, or for, for oil and gas, for barrels per day, it makes sense to to not include partial dates. Yeah, because I've had charts like where we have the partial dates, so it's like, hey, we're going, and then poof, yeah, it's exactly, like, whoa, why does exactly. that last so, day look yeah, really exactly. weird? So uh, that's what the other checkbox is for. Got it. So having defined this, I can then publish to the service, and again, it will only work uh, on a premium workspace, and it will... Uh, limit publishing to a non-premium workspace. Yeah, as so you it'll can be grayed out. Yeah, and that's it. Then you publish it, you refresh it. Uh, first time it takes a little longer. Subsequent refreshes are refreshing much faster. You're meeting your SLAs. It's much Very more cool. efficient, and your users are happy. Everyone's happy. And then we can just define schedule refresh in the service for saying when to run it. Absolutely. And if it's on premises, we need to use the gateway. Yep. And but outside of that, in the service, there's not a whole lot you got to do. You just That's set it. up refresh. That's it. Or hit refresh now, and it That's just works. It. Yeah. You don't need That's to tinker easy. with the parameters. The service will use those parameters yep. to generate the yeah. uh, uh, periods. One thing I notice is if in normally when you have parameters defined, if you go into the settings of the data set, you can change those parameters in the UI. Right. But because of this, like the parameters will be grayed out. You don't exactly. have access to those exactly. parameters. Exactly, you don't have access. Because incremental to them. refresh is using those and updating right. them. They right. are reserved. And exactly, and yes. the values that we set for the parameters here in desktop have no effect yes. once uh, we run incremental refresh in the service. Right. The service will parameterize those partitions or periods awesome. using those parameters. Makes sense. Uh, so uh, that's why we need them and that's why they've got those reserved All names. right. All right guys, what do you think of this? Is this great? Have you struggled with AS before, but now you're looking forward to using incre incremental refresh here? Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments below. We will answer as best as we can. Also, we'll have links down below to the documentation and blogs where you can go find out more info about this as well. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos. And from Patrick, myself, and Christian, thank you so much for watching, keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.